Uh, my name's Nick Hall, I work in Hollings Faculty in the Department of Apparel. Well, I like to take a, a blended approach, um, so I integrate technologies into my teaching. So my focus is still on delivery, face-to-face, uh, -face, because I believe that's still the core thing of what lecturers do and do really well. But I like to use learning technologies integrated into my practice in order to help the students uh, develop their learning further and develop independent learning outside of the time that I have with them. What I um, focus on is using things like video casting, uh, podcasting and other methods of recording what we do in the classroom to allow students to review, repeat, revise what we've done in the classroom so that if they happen to miss a lecture for legitimate reasons, um, if they've missed something that we were talking about in a lengthy kind of two hour lecture that they want to consider again, um, they can use these, these video casts or podcasts to listen back, watch back or review uh, what we've done in class. And I find that really enhances their experience um, and also helps with a really kind of flexible feeling in um, the lectures and delivery. Audio feedback I found um, has two key effects. Um, the first I'll give as a personal effect which is when you are dealing with large volumes of students audio feedback takes a lot less time um, when you're reviewing each paper um, without damaging the quality of the feedback that you're giving. For the student what I've found is, is really excellent on it is that if you think about what you, I use Turnitin for it and that gives you three minutes of audio feedback for each paper and if you think about the amount of feedback you can give in three minutes whilst talking it's a lot more intense um, than a summative written type of feedback. It's a lot more detailed but what I really find helps is that with audio feedback you're recording your intonation, um, a bit of more feeling about what you really felt about the work. The big thing for me is that it, it buys back a lot of time for me. So by doing these uh, recordings, um, so I'm lecturing anyway, so literally with the podcasting I'm just recording what I'm doing in the first place. And what I find that does is reduce the amount of questions that I'm getting on an individual basis because these generic forms answer a lot of the, the, the teething troubles or simple questions that they've got by enabling them to review what we've done at any time. You know, it solves that problem which is fantastic because it allows me to focus on writing great lectures and doing what we should be doing. Um, for the student, across the board it really supports their learning whether they're struggling or whether they're an excellent student. Um, it allows them to review their learning at their own pace to make sure that their notes are accurate, to revise what we've been talking about if they've forgotten about it um, and so it really supports this process of them learning independently and building on their learning outside of class. Actually the original reason I introduced blended learning approaches into my teaching is because I'm dyslexic and uh, I've got it because I've sort of developed a lot of my own learning practices to cope with dyslexia over the years uh, I found that uh, introducing this kind of visual learning that's multi-sensory so you know we've got audio we've got video and we've got face-to-face -face going on um, in hand in hand with each other um, that it really helps uh, dyslexic students to um, focus on what they're doing and to uh, absorb the learning in small bites because it tends to be with dyslexia that your attention span is slightly smaller than other people, it's difficult to concentrate sometimes. So a two hour lecture is your worst nightmare, you know, you've got to sit there and concentrate and listen to everything and make notes rapidly and that's actually very difficult. Um, so uh, two things that it, it does, um, it allows people to review things in, in bite size, those that would like to, to do that at their own pace 
Um, a lot of dyslexic students actually get audio recorders as part of their support package. Um, but it can be very embarrassing for them to come up to the front and ask if they can leave an audio recording device next to me. So I do that for them so they don't have to do that and post it for them and edit it if I need to. And it allows them to um, methodologically approach their learning in different ways and particularly the visual aspect, the video casts I find are incredibly helpful for that. So I found that um, the, this blended learning approach not only really uh, develops the learning of um, dyslexic students, but in, in an inclusive way, um, the visuals, the audio, the multi-sensory method really enhances the top end uh, of students as well, and the middle. I've found that all of my students are basically moving up a grade band based on, on this approach. Thanks for watching this Good Practice Exchange film. You can find loads more teaching ideas on our website. Visit kelp.mmu.ac.uk forward slash good underscore practice.